Welcome to Lily's Review Zone. Here are the first five movies I watched this year and my fascinating thoughts on each of them. Planet of the Apes, 1968. This is a huge banger to start with. I knew that this was a big film, but I had no idea of the complex web of humour, melodrama, and psychological horror I was in for. First of all, the three stranded boys are kind of weird. Before they even come upon cruel and evil apes, they're just sort of off and strange. Charlton Heston gives a perfect, insane freak performance. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a very fascinating and odd inclusion of a female astronaut on their ship who does two things in the movie about five minutes in. One gets gazed at, two dies. This is a really interesting counterpart to the only other human woman character in the movie, a sexy mute, low-brained human woman who is apparently easy for Charlton to love. Oh, there were women, lots of women, lots of love making, but no love. He could not love before, back on Earth, you see, but it's easy now that he has met a toddler in a woman's body who can never speak. It's thoughtful, it's weird, it has apes in it. What more could I ever wish for? This is our hero fighting against the tyranny of the apes who hold him captive, but this guy is kinda insane and evil. He talks of a repopulation plot that him and his boys were gonna do with the woman who died, and the pervy glee of this is so arresting. The most precious cargo we brought along. She was to be the new Eve, with our hot and eager help, of course. What the fuck is going on? Society is broken, whether it's humans or apes. Damn, never would have guessed that. The monkey suits are also the best costumes ever made, I think. They have so much personality, and they're pretty cute and or beautifully ugly. I love the cute heterosexual chimp couple, I love the horse boys, and I love that the orange uniforms the Freaky Monkey Council wears are so intensely 60s and horrible. Objection! Trusted! I literally love them so much. Those ugly fucks. This movie's actually one of the best to ever be made, I think. That final moment is so intense and so gorgeously designed. God. What a perfect start to the year. What a perfect first movie. The Crucible, 1996. So I love witch stuff. I love the inherent spooky atmosphere of New England settler communities and their warped religious suspicions. I go back to Jesus! And I love Winona Ryder and her wide open dear girl eyes, but this movie, despite having all that, pissed me off. <laughs> Sorry, Crucible heads. Now, I can appreciate that this movie is primarily an allegory for McCarthyism, and that maybe I should look at it more from that perspective. It's a message about how vital it might be to refuse to debase yourself in order to escape persecution in service of greater freedom is great and cool, and communicated through a number of very pleasing screaming scenes. Because it is my name! <laughs> I say God is I mean, I do love a scream. Like, I'm not devoid of all of the pleasures of the human heart. However, for me, it's pretty tough to watch a story ostensibly about religiously fueled femicide that chooses to be, instead, about how a greasy, adulterous man redeems himself while calling the weird 17 year old girl he chooses to have sex with a nasty little slut. It is a whore, Mr. Danforth! He lies! He lies! And now she'll stab me with a scream, but she is a whore! This is a whore's vengeance now. I don't know. It, it's... it's... It <laughs> It's a lot. The movie is at its peak when we get to see the group of teens reveling in their group improv sessions in the court, and as much as I do think Daniel Day-Lewis was slaying, and the focus on the warped judiciary process is great, it's sad to me that it lets its mad girls be just a spectacle. Winona pieces out after being called slurs in court, and we leave her to see John Proctor and his wife go, mwah, I love you, mwah, mwah, I love you and I love God, kiss kiss. I don't know, it's kind of cool, it's kind of great, but I also kind of hate it. Interesting. Whisper of the Heart, 1995. I love this movie for so many reasons. First, its focus on country roads. A perfect, specific, sweet choice. Second, the utter confusion and rage that our main character experiences when she has a crush on a boy. She simply decides to despise him, and that is iconic. Thirdly, the concept of meeting through library books is so cute. And finally, the absolute and sudden whirlwind of creative passion that possesses this little girl's body because she starts liking a boy who is talented uh, is so good. She sees that he plays the violin and she goes, oh, okay. 
say, I need to write a novel immediately so I can be amazing just like you. That is what real love is. Becoming insane and devoting yourself to getting good at some kind of art. That's real. <laughs> the Red Turtle, 2016. This movie annoyed me. Why, you ask? Well, it's about a beady-eyed little fella getting stranded on an island. He has some weird dreams and he tries to escape, but his raft keeps getting destroyed. Ah, this is because a turtle from the sea is destroying it for fun. So he kills the turtle in a fit of rage and this, this is actually the moment where the movie really had something. The scene where he flips the turtle over and kills it is so quietly violent, so oddly and suddenly shocking. And then for a moment we hold our breath as slowly grief starts to sink into this man. This feels scary and weird and claustrophobic. After this, however, the movie takes a nosedive by making the dead turtle actually a sexy woman. The rest of the movie shows the couple living out their lives on the island. They have a little baby. The baby falls into some water, but it's fine. It's okay. That baby swim good, because that baby has a turtle mummy. Reviewers online called this movie a touching exploration of the cycle of life and whatnot, an exploration of pain and death and beauty or something like that, but to me it seems vapid. Kill something, then have sex with it, then die. Is that all? I don't know. I don't like it. Patterson, 2016. This movie is really thoughtful and lovely. It stars Adam Driver as a bus driver in Patterson, New Jersey, and he loves his girlfriend and he loves writing poems every day. We have plenty of matches in our house. It follows an interesting cyclical pattern as each day he gets up, goes to work, drives his little bus, and writes a poem. And so it becomes a sort of meditation on patterns. Driver is constantly seeing people in pairs, his girlfriend spends her days painting everything black and white with stripes or dots or something similar, and every day he sees Chidi from The Good Place getting re-dumped by the same woman. Marie, baby, I need to talk to you. No. Everything changes, but everything is different. It seems like a meditation on creativity, but ultimately it feels more invested in the life that goes on in the background of creative work, whether that work really goes anywhere or not. It's really cute and pure and funny, and there's a, a dog who farts. That was my movies. Bye.